to. And it just made you think about yourself playing the game, like, outside of the game. Wait a minute, and then I realized that's not the brand of television I have, so, like, what's going on here? By the time that Liquid Snake had been defeated and the credits rolled on Metal Gear Solid, it was clear that Hideo Kojima and his team had crafted a true masterpiece in just the early days of 3D action gaming. And now the world was hungry for more of Solid Snake's adventures, just as speculation grew on a new PlayStation game created. The gaming world wondered what kinds of surprises Kojima's team had planned. In the late 90s, Metal Gear Solid was an enormous success on the PlayStation. The game had proven that Kojima's team was more than up to the task of moving their tactical espionage action series into three-dimensional gameplay. But by the year 2000, a new PlayStation console was almost upon us. The PlayStation 2 launched in Japan on March 4, 2000, while the North American launch of the console followed in November of the same year. The console had a monstrously successful launch amid complaints of a dearth of compelling games to play. The cries of not enough good games died a year later, however, as Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty was released in North America and Japan in November of 2001, and in Europe a few months later. The game was definitely the next evolution of 3D tactical espionage action, but Kojima had a shock for anyone expecting to spend a lot more time with Solid Snake. In a controversial second act twist, the game switched out protagonists and put players in control of newcomer Raiden. The change of heroes was deliberate and focused purely on growing the fan base for the series. But to the team's surprise, the reactions to Raiden as the new main character were not universally positive. <laughs> Despite criticisms from players who desperately missed playing a solid snake, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty went on to become the biggest selling game in the entire franchise. Metal Gear Solid 2 was filled with some of the most spectacular visuals and cinematic scenes that video game players had ever seen. Stunning water effects, complex physics, deep layers of environmental interactivity, and truly mesmerizing cutscenes were some of the calling cards for the game. The complicated story starts with a prologue that takes place two years after the events in Metal Gear Solid. The action begins with a dramatic leap off the George Washington Bridge as Solid Snake infiltrates a tanker ship to investigate the creation of a new powerful Metal Gear. During his infiltration, Snake combats invading soldiers who have come to steal the new Metal Gear called Ray. Snake also comes face to face with his old nemesis, Revolver Ocelot, who has had his severed arm replaced by the nanite infested arm of Liquid Snake. In a very tense face off, Ocelot murders the commanding officers on the ship and sets off explosives to sink it before escaping in Metal Gear Ray. And Solid Snake is apparently lost in the wreckage. Metal Gear Solid 2 picks up two years later and introduces Raiden as the playable character. Raiden infiltrates Big Shell, an offshore cleanup facility that has been overrun by terrorists, and attempts to rescue the hostages locked up in the installation. During his mission, Raiden battles extraordinary foes like Fat Man, a bomb-throwing sadist with a predilection for inline skates. Fortune, a woman with the power to make every bullet miss her, and Vamp, a creepy, seemingly immortal killer with a taste for blood. It doesn't take long for Raiden to recognize that things are not like they seem. Big Shell turns out to be a development facility for a new Metal Gear called Arsenal that has been commandeered 
by Solidus Snake, another genetic clone and brother to Liquid and Solid Snake. In the latter stages of Metal Gear Solid 2, the story veers in an entirely new and thought-provoking direction, suggesting that Raiden is actually a character in a Metal Gear video game. There's a point like where the game goes to the game over screen. And so you think, like, I messed up, I died, but I didn't die. But the gameplay's still going on in that little window. Kojima signifies that it's, it's still a game, but you nevertheless get completely sucked in because of all these other things he's doing to make it feel immersive and believable. Raiden must face up to the doubts that he has in the world around him before he can stop Solidus, and with Solid Snake's help, uncover the truth about the Patriots, the shadowy conspiratorial organization that has been the dominant force behind the events in the Metal Gear games. Needless to say, the complex narrative was a little overwhelming for some Metal Gear fans. で、アクションゲームではなかなかストーリーが出てきて、評価を得たんですね。で、最初 for Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, the newly formed Kojima Productions decided to take a more down-to-earth approach. 3は非常に簡潔なストーリーにしました。あの、スネークとザーゴースの関係に協力するということで、そして、ま、評判が良かったんで、良かったなと。As the PlayStation 2 was handily beating the competition in the console wars during the early years of this decade, Demand for a new Metal Gear game grew, and this time Kojima Productions was prepared to release two epic Metal Gear Solid adventures in a single console generation. Taking things in an entirely different direction, the developers chose to set Metal Gear Solid 3 in the past, at the roots of the Metal Gear legacy. The prequel would take into account real-world tensions at the height of the Cold War in the early 1960s. Once again, players would be in control of someone other than Solid Snake, and would instead play as Naked Snake, a CIA operative that is sent into the jungles of Russia with his mentor, a female super spy codenamed The Boss. In the prologue mission, The Boss defects and teams up with the chief antagonist in the story, Colonel Volgan. After an intense fight, the boss leaves Naked Snake badly wounded as she and Volgan make off with the stolen nuclear super tank and a predecessor to the Metal Gear called the Shagohai. After healing, Naked Snake is sent back into the jungle to defeat Volgan, confront the boss, and destroy the tank. To do this, Snake must face the members of the boss's Cobra unit. Many gamers have called these characters the greatest collection of bosses in the entire franchise. The End is an expert sniper that fights Snake in a long-range, protracted battle that can literally take hours. The Fear is a spider-like adversary with double-jointed limbs and a surgically enhanced tongue. The Fury is a former Russian cosmonaut who battles Snake with a flamethrower. The Pain has the ability to command hornets and uses them to combat Snake. The Sorrow, a spirit medium, is perhaps the most interesting of all the bosses in the game because he employs the power of the dead to fight Snake. You are walking through, you know, this stream and you're seeing these dead soldiers and you're like, okay, dead soldiers. And then you're, you start to notice, like, wait a second, these are the ghosts of the people that I killed. It makes you look back at what you've already done and sort of see it in a different way, like, wow, I've really killed, like, a lot of people. Like, if this was real life, I would be, you know... Uh, completely haunted from beginning to end metal gear solid 3 is the near perfect prequel setting up the events and characters that would follow it beautifully metal gear solid 3 also helped to define and cement the status of kojima productions as world-class game makers the team of experts
expertly shown how to get the most out of the PlayStation 2 hardware and have the sales and the critical praise to prove it. I've never played through all of the Metal Gear games. So I had what I call the Metal Gear Summer. And I've played through 1, 2, and 3 back to back. I didn't play anything else. And it was the best summer I have ever had. But would the team be able to contend with another PlayStation console transition? Kojima Productions' toughest challenges lay ahead as the team faced the limitless potential and the baffling technological puzzles of the brand new PlayStation 3. Yeah, I think uh, the, the whole Metal Gear series has, has been a huge part of the uh, PlayStation success. The Metal Gear games, I mean, from the Psycho Manus battle to the uh, Jeep chase at the end of Metal Gear 1 to the opening of Metal Gear 2 on the bridge to, you know, the torture sequences that sort of live in all the games. It really is almost like an action movie art film. Kojima-san is, so this is, the opening of the Ghost 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 of the the announcement and development of Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots represented a new era for Kojima Productions, as polished storytellers versed both in cinematic flair and dynamic gameplay, the new platform from Sony offered the experienced game makers the opportunity to dream big. しな動きをするこの規則が with each subsequent release of a Metal Gear Solid 4 trailer, the world grew more and more excited by the promising look of the game. Was this the Sony PlayStation 3's most important game on the horizon? To many, it certainly looked that way. Metal Gear Solid the one the time, the ました